Hello adventurers, my name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the 46th episode of our background series. Today we're going to be going over a relatively interesting background, not really so much in terms of mechanics, but in terms of not a lot of people are going to know about it, we're going to be going over the shipwright, which is found in the Ghosts of Salt Marsh Adventure Module. It's an okay adventure module, by the way. Like, it's written really well, and I like it for the most part. Although it didn't really sell that well, and not a lot of people I know are, like, super hyped up about it. It's really interesting. I don't know. Uh, if you have it and have ran it, let me know what the results were. I've only read through it, like, one and a half times, I guess. But I haven't actually had a chance to run it yet. Not a lot of people are really interesting from the player side either, which is really weird. Because usually if you go online, you're like, hey, I'm going to run a, a d and game. Who's in? They're like, yeah, woo-woo. And they're like, yeah, it'll be Ghost of Shut Salt Marsh. Suddenly the DMs dry up. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. Ah, uh, whatever. In any case, um... That's what we're talking about today. If this is the first episode you're seeing and you'd like to check them all out, or if you haven't seen all of them yet, um, best way to do that is just by using the playlist I created, by either clicking on the little eye icon up top there, or waiting until the end and clicking on one of the end cards. That being said, let's dive into the shipwright first by checking out his description. You have sailed into war on the decks of great ships, patching their hulls with soup bowls and prayers. You once helped build a fishing vessel that single-handedly saved the town from starvation. You have seen a majestic crown in your dreams that you have not been able to replicate in wood. Since childhood, you have loved the water and have been captivated by the many vessels that travel on it. Basically, you're like the shipbuilding equivalent of a train hobbyist. It's all you think about. Probably all you talk about, too. Just go nuts with it. Been passionate about it since you were a kid. You got some skills, probably got some pretty decent sea legs on you. Overall, you're just a pretty valuable member of every crew, because, you know, a crew is only really as good as the ship they're sailing on. As so far as to say, if they got no ship, you're kind of not a very good crew, right? In any case, let's now transition over to its mechanics here. Under skill proficiencies, you gain access to both history and perception. Perception is always great, but history, your mileage may vary depending on your campaign. In terms of tool proficiencies, you gain carpenter's tools and water vehicles as well, which is super nice to have. Uh, carpenter's tools is almost always great. Um, water vehicles... Once, much like history, it's very campaign dependent. Taking a look at your equipment, you actually get a decent amount. You gain a set of carpenter's tools, a blank book, presumably for jotting down notes, 10 ounces of ink, an ink pen, set of traveler's clothes, and a leather pouch with 10 GP, which puts you right about the average. Overall, yeah, mechanically it's pretty good, especially if you're on a seafaring campaign, I would almost consider it necessary someone take this background. Outside of that though, I don't know, it's uh, it would be very interesting. I would make an argument that you'd just be kind of like a master with uh, woodcraft in general, but that's kind of up to the DM. In any case, let's transition over to its feature. Provided you have carpenters, tools, and wood, you can perform repairs on water vehicles. When you use this ability, you restore a number of hit points to the hull of a water vehicle equal to 5 multiplied by your proficiency modifier. A vehicle cannot be patched by you this way again until after it has been pulled ashore and fully repaired. Basically, it's just a quick, quick patch job. Quick band-aid, put it over all the holes, uh, just enough to have you hobble back to shore and fully repair it. It really is interesting. If you're on a seafaring campaign, I would consider this almost necessary. However, if you're just doing a normal campaign, mileage may vary. You know, I would make an argument that you could repair almost any wood-based construct. However, that'll require some work with your DM. In any case, definitely talk with them about it if you're planning on picking this, because it might be more or less completely useless, so just bear that in mind. In any case, let's now look at the suggested characteristics. For the examples personality trait, I went with I thrive under pressure, 
under the ideal crew. If everyone on deck pitches in, we'll never sink, and this will take you towards the good alignment. Under Bond, I repair broken things to redeem what's broken in myself, which is super edgy. And Flaw, I don't know when to throw something away, I never know when it might be useful again. Basically, you're a pack rat edgelord who really likes boats. Uh, pretty interesting. Um, a lot of the Ghosts of Saltmarsh suggested characteristics are pretty cool. Um, these are just the ones that kind of sticked out most to me. Thriving under pressure is always a great thing, especially when it's your job to repair a ship that's on the precipice of, of sinking. Um, it makes sense that if you believe if everyone pulls their own weight, everything will go pretty smoothly. Just get your head down, get the work done, move on. Um, a little bit of trauma always goes a long way when it comes to character development. And holding on to things for an extended duration of time might be incredibly beneficial or a massive hindrance depending on how things play out. In any case, let's get to my personal thoughts. Uh, once again, as I mentioned several times already, mileage is going to vary hugely on this. Some of you are going to be able to use it every single campaign, or every, every, every single session of every single campaign, where others of you aren't going to get to use it at all. This is where communication with your dungeon master is super important, because if the campaign is going to be set in a desert and you take this background without knowing that, you're going to find yourself at least during those early levels, being upstaged. And no one really likes that feeling, so best to just have the conversation and get it over with. In any case, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, or ideas of your own involving the ship rate, or if you've used it in the past, feel free to let me know down beneath. And if you have any stories, please share those as well. If you'd like access to a free one-shot written by yours truly, please do check out the guild hall and use code WELCOME and it'll be all yours. Um, that being said guys, I hope you have a great day and as always, happy adventuring.